What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Overseas Famous Podcast. I'm your host, Kevin Owens, here with Jermaine Taylor. Uh, Jermaine has played all over the world, uh, played in the NBA. There's some stuff that's really cool because you were a highly, highly touted football player and, you know, getting recruited very highly for football. So let's just jump into this before, because this is like an interesting thing. Because when you're in high school and you're very good at basketball and you're very good at football, what was the what was the decision? Like, what made you choose basketball? Because you went to UCF. What made you choose basketball over football? Well, I also uh, I ran track too, and I was actually recruited. I had more uh, like letters for track than anything. I did the uh, long jump, high jump, triple jump. I have uh, two state medals. Uh, one for the high jump. Sorry about this. Uh, I'm outside. <laughs> All good. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I got two state medals for the high jump uh, and the triple jump. Uh, but what it all came down to is uh, just my love for basketball. I've been playing basketball since I was nine years old in fourth grade. And, you know, I just – everything else I just did just to really pass time. And I actually got into football because uh, I wanted one of my friends to play basketball. And he was like, uh, you know, he was heavily recruited for football and uh, he wouldn't play. So I kept trying to get him. He was like, OK, I'll play uh, basketball if you play football. And that's what really got me into football. That's incredible. I, and we we deal with a world where people probably get pissed off. Like you're you walked in and you're just like, all right, I'll play football. My friends here. And then you're just a ridiculous football player where people are just like, what the fuck? Like how, like it were people you're suddenly playing in front of and they're like, well, this is, this sucks. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm spiritual, man. So I believe it's just all just a blessing to be honest. You know, I feel like it's, you know, it's not me. It's, you know, someone blessing me. So that's really how I look at it. So. That's, that's incredible. Uh, it is just a, it's, it's, I always think, you know, we always talk about athletes and like young athletes these days, everyone, there's almost like that, that early time when they're like, focus on one sport and you're just like one sport from like seventh grade on and they never get to experience. And you were able to experience, you know, being a very, you know, tremendous athlete at basketball, uh, tremendous basketball player, tremendous football player, tremendous track star. Uh, that has to be fun and almost becoming you know, one of those things where people who play can kind of see, listen, you can star in all these different sports and it's helpful because, it, you know, you're not overusing the same muscles. Is that a philosophy that you believe in when these all these athletes talk about, you know, focusing on one sport as opposed to, you know, you, you you're like you said, you were getting recruited for track, football, basketball. It's great to have options. <laughs> so it's yeah. good. Well, it's funny that you're saying that because uh, I have a nephew who's who's uh, young. He's going into, you know, he's seventh grade now, sixth grade, and he acts. He just asked me the same thing because he's good at baseball, he's good at basketball, and he's also good at uh, football. And he asked me, you know, what should he do? Just trying to get some advice. And my advice to him was just, you know, follow what you love. I told him I did it all, but I enjoyed doing them all. You know what I mean? Like none of, neither one of the sports that I played was like a hassle or it was like something that I did enjoy. Like I enjoyed going to practices. I enjoyed the track meets. I enjoyed football like everything about it. I, I actually loved doing and I had a good time doing it. So that was the only reason why I was doing it. And I just told him to do the same. Just go with what you love. If you don't feel like you want to play football, then you shouldn't play football. And if you feel like you want to just spend more time focusing on basketball, then that's what, that's what you should do. It's great. Uh, the, the advice when we talk about like athletes and, and giving back, your advice is really good because like you said, you just gave it uh, to younger people in your life. And now you're kind of sharing it with the younger people in the world. Uh, do you have people that, that come to you for advice, players, athletes uh, who come to you and are just like, listen, how do I get this? How do I do this? Help me out. Do you have that? I feel like as athletes, we suddenly become like mentors when we kind of get towards the end of our careers. Yeah, yeah, I have it all the time. I mean, I was even just in Haiti this past weekend. Um, I work with uh, this, uh, it's called Sports Power. So we just travel to like all these usually third world countries and we'll like go visit orphanages. We'll throw like clinics for kids. We'll have like, uh, and we'll play a game. 
in front of, you know, like these huge crowds because, you know, some of these countries they've never, you know, got to see, you know, someone like myself, for example, I play in the NBA. So they've never seen, you know, that level of talent, you know, there. So, and, and like I said, I just, I literally just got back Monday and that was some of the questions that they were asking. And my, my answer to all of that, because I get asked this question so often, and my answer to it all is, is back to love again. Like, it was easy for me to get to where I was because I loved the game of basketball. My love for basketball kept me uh, away from drugs. It kept me, you know, making the grades because I had to make the grades to play basketball. If I didn't make the grades, I couldn't play basketball. I love basketball that much, so I have to do what it takes to play basketball. Like, that's even how I got punished. Like my mom used to punish me and say, uh, okay, you can't go to basketball practice today. And that was like, wow, you know what I mean? Like that was like everything to me. And then it just got to the point to where she couldn't even do that anymore because even if she's like, okay, you can't go to basketball practice today, I want you home. I would, you no, know, I'm going to basketball practice. You know what I mean? Like there was nothing she could say to stop me from, you know, doing what I love. So she just had to, okay, look for other ways, you know, for punishment and, that's what I say. Like, if, if you don't love it, you shouldn't be doing it. And that goes for anything, whether it's basketball, you want to be a lawyer, you want to be whatever you want to be. If, if you don't love it, it's not going to work because, I mean, you're not going to do what it takes to, to get it because a lot comes with being a basketball player. And when you kind of – you're talking about the love of the game, which is so important because uh, when you eventually – you know, you play college basketball, you have a great career. Um you then move on, you get drafted, and then you have this whole situation where it's like, who knows? Like the NBA is such a crazy business that it's like, am I gonna, am I gonna stay here? You're you're constantly thinking, what was your mentality when you went in there? Because when you're drafted, you know, 32nd, you then go to the Rockets, and it's just like that take us through that mentality when you get drafted and then suddenly you're like traded on, you know, close to the draft and you're just like, Holy shit, what just happened? Because there's so many different things going on. And it's like, am I playing for this team? Am I playing? Am I getting bounced around? Uh, what was your mentality or were you just like, shit, you hell yeah, this is great. I just made it. I mean, when I was first drafted, like that was, that was, it was like, I really didn't even, take the time to like really appreciate what happened because I was already on to the next. Okay. Now I'm drafted. Okay. Now I want to be, you know, rookie of the year. Like I want to do all of this. And that was my mindset. But once you get an NBA, you, you start to see that that's not like, you can't control that. Like there's so many other things that are outside of basketball that are just there, you know? And I mean that by like, so my whole life has been trial and error. You know what I mean? Like I didn't have guidance. I didn't have a father. I didn't have someone telling me like, this is what you're supposed to do. And this is what you're not supposed to be, be doing. So when I get in the NBA, it was kind of the same thing. Like I had no one walking me through that process. Like no one in my family had ever, you know, had money or had, you know, experiences, these experiences that I'm experiencing. So I get there and I was just making, you know, these, mistakes of just you know like for example like I was just being honest and once you get to that next level you can't be honest with everything like you can't speak from the heart you can't like you have to follow the rules if that makes sense like because business is business you know what I mean and it, I'm pretty sure you know what I mean when it comes to that and that's just that was really the heartbreaking part because I had all these goals of of what I wanted to do once I got an MBA and I just quickly started to see that that's just so much out of my control we talk a lot about uh you know politics and it it goes from like aau on up you have like politics on this team and politics and it keeps going and people don't understand that those things still kind of follow you to the nba you know you a talent uh you might have more talent than someone else but they have you know maybe a better agent or maybe they or have been there or they played with someone or this guy coached them. I've seen a lot bring, of that. Or they bring more money to the organization than you do. That's the the yep. main, that's business right there. Like, you know, it's, and that's, I don't want to make it seem like I'm complaining. I'm just telling you. you know, that's, <laughs> it, like if I went to UCF and I have 300 followers follow me on Instagram and this guy went to Duke and he has 200,000 people following him, he brings more money to the organization than I do. People will buy his jersey, they'll order the TV package, they'll do all of this. So it doesn't matter if I'm better than him. He brings more money to the organization and at the end of the day, that's you know what's important. That's the business. That's, that's how it works. 
I thought that was the the most fascinating thing. And maybe it was just because I went to Monmouth University, a small division one school, and you mm -hmm. suddenly have uh, your I, I go to the G League and I'm there and I'm playing. And I'm like, oh, this dude went to Duke. I know who he is, but I'm like busting his ass right now. And you're like, how? And then he gets a call up and you're just like, what the hell just happened? And it's just one of those things that you just don't you get. Gotta, you got you to gotta dive into my story, bro. Like that's literally for my whole career. Like literally from start to now, like that's been my career. Like, I mean, again, like I'm not complaining because it is what it is. That's just how it works. But even, you know, with like, for example, the big three, the last time I played in the big three, I averaged 11 points in 11 minutes. You know what I'm saying? And the next year, I was the only guy on my team who had to compete, you know, for a, a spot again. You know, everybody else, you know, some guys got bumped up to captain roles. You know what I mean? Other guys, their spots are solidified because, I mean, who knows little old me? You know what I mean? Like, my name doesn't ring bells like that. But, you know, if you have someone who spent 13 years in the NBA or this guy spent 11 years in the NBA, more people relate to who he is. And that's the business. Like, that's how it works. So my story, because I've never been – like a political person. I've never been the one who has to, who really says what's politically correct. You know what I mean? And so my life, this is, this is what it's been. You know what I mean? I have a stat that lists the most efficient scores coming out of college in like the last 20 years now. Number one is Steph Curry. Me and Dwayne Wade are tied for number two. And like three and four is like Kyrie and like Dame Willard. Like that's the list. And I'm tied for number two on that list. But the only difference is like, I'm not, the political type and it's not because it's most because i don't i didn't know how to you know what i mean like yeah. when i was going through that game i i didn't know how to do any of that the only thing i knew how to do was be who i who i am mm -hmm. be authentic be organic and just call things how i see it but you know in business that's not always you know accepted and i, I suffer from that you know what i mean so if i could go back in time i would definitely do things totally different i, I would have played the game better you know what i mean i would have you know sat on the bench and i would have been clapping and happy kind of being <laughs> like everyone else until i got you know where i wanted to be and then i would have you know probably started being more myself because then now i have my own platform thing like but i wasn't thinking like this i didn't have i i didn't know what was going on like i just got in and i and i had to figure that out as i went and you know like because even though i i like people like for example the big three I've only played two years in the NBA. Like, you know what I mean? Like, no, no one really knows who I am. Like, I don't have a name like that. But if you go look at my resume, it's going to impress you. Like, because I haven't just started doing this. I've literally been doing this since I started playing basketball. My first game ever, I had, like, 24 points. And I've been a big-time scorer every time. Like, I've averaged 13 points in 16 minutes at Summer League one year. I was the number one prospect in the game. Like, I will get in the game for 21 minutes, and I got 23 points. Like, these are, like, consistent. Like, this is not, like – and this is something that you can go look up yourself. Mm -hmm. But no one – I mean, who cares, though? Like, that's really how, how it is, like, because I'm living this life. Like, I've been around Kyrie. I've played against Kyrie. Kyrie knows what I can do. Like, a lot of these guys, they know what – but no one says anything. Like, they know how the league really is. They know the political side. They know the guys who, you know, get hurt because of the political side but like it is what it is like that's how people look at it well you you even said uh what the players and it's it's a weird situation because even what the players think it doesn't really amount to as much as you would think um even looking at like mvps and you know some of these awards that are going out the players are like well this guy and then the media is like well this guy and you're like shouldn't the player's voice matter more than like a, a journalist shouldn't the guys that are grinding shouldn't they matter more than like some random guy who's just sitting behind a computer yeah i mean and, and that's how i look at i mean that, that should go that should apply to everything like i would never go speak about something that i've never done or experienced or like so I don't understand why they're even really speaking on like they never played, they've never been in a, a game and took a shot in the last three minutes. They've never, you know, split a defender, went to the rack, spin move. They've never done any of that. So like, why are you like? I, I just don't. I mean, and see, these are the reasons why, like, certain things don't work out for me because I'm being honest and I speak like this. And when you do this, it causes I don't know, I, it causes what it causes. You know what I mean? So 
I don't understand it. I mean, I do understand it really, but it's this thing that I guess we're not supposed to talk about in the world. Everybody knows what's going on, you know what I mean? So it's what it is. And you, you, when we talk about, you know, when you almost compare it and you say like, uh, you know, it's the same thing. Like I'm not walking into, you know, a business office and being like, here's what you have to do or a lawyer's office and being like, here's how you have to win this case. Like, we don't know enough. Like just because I watched Johnny Depp's trial, like I don't know enough about the fucking law to be like, Oh, here, this is so it's, uh, and, but for some reason us as athletes were always put into that position to be like, you know, almost shh, just, just stop. Like we know what we're talking about. Cause apparently we've watched enough basketball, but the guys who have grinded and played don't really have that say. And I think, you know, this is why, honestly, that is like the reason I started this podcast. I started it because I felt like I didn't have a voice. Like as an athlete, I didn't have that voice. I didn't, especially as an overseas athlete, because I played predominantly overseas. I didn't have that voice to kind of, you know, share my story or share other people's stories. And I think it's just, it's crazy. And I think that's why, you know, I love your honesty because that is, it's so important. I think that's why, you know, we as athletes are able to speak out now and be like, this is, this is what it is, but playing the game, it sucks because you, you, there's guys that you, like you said, they play the game and they know, and they're groomed that way. And I think in college, big time colleges almost groom these athletes to be like, here's how you have to do it. Like, here's what you have to do when you get to the next level. But like guys from smaller school, like I'm just, I just went in like, Hey, I'm here to play basketball. And I didn't know any of the other stuff. And it's yeah. frustrating. Yeah. And, and, and then because it's like a, a unspoken rule, like people, people don't uh, really speak on it. You know what I mean? Like, because it's like a, a rule that like everyone knows, but they don't want to be the one to, to, I guess, I don't know, expose you to it, I guess. I, I have no idea because I was around enough who could have told me. Like, like anyone, and, and it wouldn't have taken a lot. Like, it could have just someone just, hey, this is how the game works, you know. You went to UCF, this guy went to Arizona, you know. he Their games are sold out for the next 15 years, you know what I mean? So all those fans, all those boosters, he's going. they're going to support him. They're going to buy his jersey. They're going to order the TV package. They're going to do all these things. You went to a small school. Yeah, you're better than him, but it's it's a business. You know what I mean? That's just how it is. It's a business. So it's nothing personal. Like people say, it's nothing personal. It's a business. But how do I not take that personal? Because my whole life, I've been preparing to be a superstar. I didn't want to, I don't want to just get in the league and just be happy. Oh, I'm in the NBA. No, I wanted to be one of the best in the NBA. You know what I mean? I wanted to be like Kobe or LeBron. I wanted to have my own shoes. I wanted to be like Jordan. Like these are the things that I wanted. And now mm -hmm. you're telling me that I can't do it because of things that I can't control. I can't control that. I can't control where I was born at or, or the school. Like I couldn't control none of that. You know what I mean? Like I just had to I guess deal with it and learn things, like I said, trial and error. And that's, yep. that's really how everything works. So that first year, you know, you're you're in with the Rockets. You're kind of bounced up and down between the Rio, like Rio Grande, and then you're bounced back and forth. Was that like, we kind of talked about that, you know, you're, the, you go in not thinking that. You go in like, I'm not, I'm, you, I can start here but you bet your ass I'm going to be here and then I'm going to be here. That's what we yep. think. That's the mindset is like, I don't care who you are. I don't care what, what your name is. I'm coming for your job. I'm coming after you. And then you're kind of bounced down the, did that like change anything within you? Or were you just still just like, I right, screw it. Did it make you, did it motivate you more to be like, fuck it. I need to get back up there. Like this thing, this ain't going to be the thing. It was it was it was the weirdest thing for me because I even I, I asked I first asked if they could put me in the league because like I'll be honest like I've I've never sat on the bench my whole entire career I've been playing basketball a long time and I've never sat on the bench like you know like you know when I first started at UCF you know I I didn't play as much but every year like but during I still played though if that makes sense. But once I got in the NBA, I wasn't playing at all. Like, I was, like, suit and tie some games. Like, I wasn't getting in at all. And then I asked them to put me down in the D-League, you know, because I wanted to play. Like, I don't, like I said, I love this game. Like, this isn't something I'm just doing, like, to be famous. I have money. I love this with everything in me. So I wanted to play. I asked them to put me down. And when I would go down, I would, like, have, like, 30 points. I would have 
25 points. Like, I would do what I've always done and what I've always knew I could do. So it was just frustrating to to then get a call up and or get called back up, and I'm at practice. And I'm doing the same thing at practice. And if I'm being totally honest with you, the NBA was much easier for me than college because in college I was always – not even just college. My whole career I've always been the main focus. Like, there's quotes from Calipari who was saying how they – designed their whole defense to stop me and I still had 24 points like so you know what I'm saying like that's that's just that's my game that's how I play so I, I wanted to do that but like I said man it's just it's hard you know what I mean and I don't want to make it seem like I complain because I'm really just telling them you know what it is like this is just this is it you know what I mean like this is this is this is you know politics this is the business it is and that's <clears throat> there's always like there's always the people who are going to be like, oh, poor little basketball player didn't. And it's it's ridiculous because, A, like we said, we have this mentality, like this is what we want. Like we've given our, we've sacrificed, like you just talked about your sacrifice, you sacrificed so much to be in the position you were in to, you know, get drafted, to be on an NBA team. And yeah, you're pissed. Yeah, you're going to be pissed, especially, you know, if there's other things outside of your control. And I think that's uh, something that, you know, when it, when I hear it and when our listeners hear it, it doesn't, I've discussed it a million times. It doesn't come off as complaining. It comes off as like, you know, this is our passion. This is you, everyone in the world, no matter what you do, you should always want to be the best. You should always strive to be the best at everything you do. And if you don't, like you probably shouldn't be giving it, you know, like then just, if you're just catching a paycheck, that's fine. But, you know, for, for athletes, we want to give it the best our whole time. And I think, you know, what, so you, you kind of bounced around, um, you know, you're in camp, you played with some tremendously famous basketball players. Like, you know, you, you've been playing, you talk about Kyrie, you've, you know, you played, you know, and you were with LeBron for a bit. And we had my brother on uh, not too long ago. He kind of talked about his rookie LeBron's rookie year, like what LeBron was like. LeBron was 18. He was running around. Uh, they had to sneak him in the movie theaters. This is when he was like a hyped up thing. Now, when you kind of go into camp and like your mentality is like, I'm going to bust your ass. Like when you go in, did you have that like kind of like, oh, shit, it's LeBron? Or were you just like, I'm coming? Like, this is how we're going to roll. Yeah, I'm sorry. I have never played with LeBron. So I was in Cleveland. Um, it was right before he came back. So even that story is crazy because I was at, like, I, I first I went to a uh, – like I was invited to a mini camp in Cleveland. So I went to the mini camp and I did so good that literally they walked in in front of, like in front of everyone, single me out, Jermaine, we want to see in the office. I go in the office and Coach Brown tells me, you know, I see you as a Jamal Crawford, the first guy on the bench for us. You know, we want to invite you to summer league. So I'm like, okay. So I, you know, I'm still in Cleveland. I go to summer league with them. Literally right before the first game, they come to me and they say, you know, I've been told that we can only play you uh, uh, 16 minutes a game. So when you're out there, just, you know, do what you do. So in those 16 minutes, I averaged 13 points. You know what I mean? There was guys like, I think, Della Vadova was on the team, maybe 25 minutes a game, averaged like seven. Deion Waiters, 20-something minutes a game. I think he averaged like 12 or 14, something like that. And then, you know, they invited me to preseason. So I go to preseason, and I'm balling. Like, my first game, I, I scored 15 points in 18 minutes, and I missed three free throws. So I would have had 18 points in 18 minutes the first game that they played me. And then I play another game. Uh, I have like 12, and then I end up getting cut right after that. And it had nothing to do with the talent, nothing to do with anything like that. It was all because, you know, politics. You know, uh, this is this was never said, but it's just what I believe. They kept Della Vadova uh, over me. And he's like the only Australian player in the NBA. So every city that they go to, he brings the Australian crowds. Out. Everyone in Australia relates to him because he's one of those, you know, only Australian in the NBA. So he brings, you know, publicity. He brings money. He brings more, all of that more than I do because who, who am I? You know what I mean? So, you know, I end up getting cut. And then once I left there, but they told me, they go, uh, you know, we had no intentions of, of really, you know, keeping you, but you proved to us that you belong. You did so good that we tried to make some things happen, but, you know, it didn't happen like, you know, the way we wanted it to. So they said we would recommend you not go overseas. Like, just go in the D-League. You know, we tried to buy your rights from Boston. Boston wouldn't give us your rights. 
So, you know, there's a chance they could maybe even call you up, blah, blah, blah. So, so I go down to the D League in the second game of the season, I tear my ACL. So, yeah, it was. And then, like I said, I was with Cleveland literally that whole summer, the preseason, all of that. That's crazy. It is. Yeah, that's like, and people don't even, you know, when we talk about the NBA, I do think there is a, 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 or even, you know, other teams, there's like, it's almost like things are written before it even happens in pen. Like you always say things are written in pencil, but they're written in pen. And then if something goes wrong, they'll scratch it out and add, but like things are written in pen. Like they already know pretty much what's happening before. And, and you have to understand it too, like because it's a business. Like you're not just gonna go into something blind because it's your business. You can mess it up. You know what I mean? You yep. wanna have planned out. You wanna have you know things in order. And, and that's why I'm saying I'm not complaining. I'm just telling you what it is. I'm just telling you about my experience. You know, so. So when you finally headed overseas, you were kind of like, what? What was the point where you're just like, all right, this is this is where I want to go? Were you like pissed off at first? I remember. I was in the G League and I was like, I mean, we called it the D League back then, but I was like, I'm going to get my shot. I'm going to get my shot. And then finally, I was like, you know what? Like, I, I'm, I was almost pissed off making the decision to head overseas because I was like, I don't, I don't want to go. Like, I want to be here. Was that, did you have that same situation or were you just like, now let's do this? Um, well, when I went overseas, it was based, it was mostly because of uh, like the lockout. So, like, even all of that, like, it was crazy. So, I, uh, I got invited to camp with uh, the Timberwolves. Uh, the coaches that I was with, uh, the coaches that I was with at Houston had moved to uh, Minnesota, and they brought me on. And they were telling me, man, look, like, you, you're you going to make it. You know, you just get through camp and things like this. So, I was, like, I was excited. But during camp, Kevin Love, uh, he ends up breaking his hand. So, that was the year he, like, he broke his hand. So, now, instead of needing a guard, they need a big man. So they come up to me and I appreciate them because, you know, they were honest the whole way. And that's, you know, that's rare. So especially at that time, like I had played a couple of years, so I had experience, saw it. So I was just happy that they were being honest. So they let me know ahead of time. So my agent got me something in China and it was going to be like one of the biggest paychecks that I've ever had. So I was, you know, I was like, oh yeah, like I'm excited. You know, I'll definitely do that. But then Gilbert Arenas end up taking uh, the, uh, shorter i guess a uh, uh, cheaper not cheaper but he took less pay than i would have took and it's gilbert arenas he has a bigger name oh, who am i you know what i mean like and that's really how it is like because he's gilbert arenas you know they took him and they dropped me uh from, from so i never uh never went it's crazy uh yeah. and the even the ripple the domino effect that happens mm -hmm. just based on a lot of those uh different yeah. things yeah. Uh, you know, like a guy, like there's, there's been guys that I remember who I'm like, oh, if they didn't sign him, like Nazi or Muhammad, I'm like, damn. But like, mm -hmm. even like you said, Kevin Love gets hurt and you're fine. Everything's good. Everything's golden. And then Kevin Love gets hurt. Now you have to replace it. And yeah. you, you kind of head overseas, you go, um, you, so you head to Spain first, correct? Mm -hmm. And you're in Spain. Then you go to mm -hmm. Israel. Then you're in China. Uh, of the, you know, of those different situations, was that something that you're just like, you know what, this is, did you embrace that overseas lifestyle and be like, this is, this is pretty dope. This is like a, a completely different experience or were you just like, I'm going out, I'm getting, I'm going to go prove who I am. Well, I mean, I tried, but you know, that time, all of that, that was like a real, real spiritual journey for me, man. Like that, that was that was deeper than, you know, I, I mean, I can, I can say it. It was just, it was just a, uh, that was a very spiritual time for me, man. If I can be honest, like I got as close as, you know, that, I, I got a relationship with higher power from, from that whole experience. You know what I mean? Because even just going to Spain, you know, um, it was my first time out of the league. You know what I mean? Like I was just going through it in my, you know, mentally, like, will I ever be back in the league again? Like, you know, like I was going through all of those things. And then Spain was just bad. The team that I was on when I first got there, they were like 0-6. You know what I mean? Like, I, I felt like they didn't like Americans. Like, our practices, the Americans on this end of the court, the Spanish players on this end of the court. Uh, you know, like, holidays. It's crazy. We're Like, all the Americans, we're just sitting in our rooms, like, we can't even eat because everything closed down early and no one told us. So we leave practice and everything's closed. So we don't even have food. So next thing you know, we start getting like a group chat 
of all our teammates, coaches, and everyone's like in a group chat, like at a party and fireworks and all this and all Americans are sitting there like, damn, like what, what's going on? Like they all together, you know what I mean? So I, it was just a lot going on. So then I actually get a call uh, from my agent, you know, asking me, you know, someone wants me in Israel. So I'm, I'm big into the Bible at the time also. And so I'm thinking, okay, Israel is where, you know, God is going to, you know, bless me at because, you know, it's Israel. So then I get to Israel and I talked to the coach the day before and he's telling me, you know, Israel is like Miami. You know, the weather's nice, it's hot, you know, it feels good. So I get to Israel and on the, the day I get to Israel is the coldest has been in 24 years. Like, you know what I mean? Like literally, like it was on the news and everything. I get to my car, I get to my uh, uh, apartment, like everything just trash, you know what I mean? So like I said, I'm big into the Bible at the time. So I'm thinking like, oh, this is just the devil's way of distracting me, you know, for my blessing that's here. Like, that's, that's just how I was thinking. So then uh, I just saw that everything went from bad in Spain to, like, worse in Israel. And for the first time in my life, this was, like, the realest that I've ever got with, you know, higher power. I go, you know, I've heard this from my mother. I've heard about God and the Bible. You know, I've heard from sermons. But I'm not leaving this room until you speak to me, God. I was like, you know, my life is going down. And if I'm going to continue to believe in you, you have to speak to me. So I sat in my room, no lie, bro, like five, six hours, no food, no water, just a flashlight and the Bible. And I'm just opening the Bible up and I'm just pointing everything that, you know, my hand is landing on. I feel like it's speaking to me and it's talking about doing more for others than you do for yourself. Like, that's what I got from it. So I get up and I go to my teammates apartment and out of nowhere. He's like, man, I got eight brothers and sisters team hasn't paid me in like two three months like i don't know what to do so then it hit me i've been reading all day doing more for others than you do for yourself doing more for others than you do for so when i got to israel i signed a 2500 signing bonus so i'm like okay i'm gonna get this thing. then he started talking about gucci and Louis. like yeah that's rich people stuff man i never had it and i had played a couple of years in the nba at the time and i i remember kicking this stuff out of you know the way so i can get to out of the, you know out the door just to come to his place so I go back to my room, I take my three Gucci belts, my three Gucci shoes, my Prada shades, along with the $2,500, and I take it to you. Here, bro, here. He's like, oh, man, thank you, thank you. I'm like, bro, don't thank me. I like, thank God. I said, my life is going down, and I believe this is what God wants me to do, and I'm doing this to show God. Look, I'm all in. I've been reading all day, doing more for others, and do for yourself. I believe this is what you're telling me to do, so I'm doing it. I'm all in. You know? So I hand it to him, and I go back to my apartment. Literally, as soon as I stepped foot in my apartment, my agent, like, he texts me. I look, he says, pack your bags. You just got a deal in China worth more than you would have made in Israel and Spain put together. And instead of being overseas for another five months, which I hated, I only have to be in China for three weeks and I get to go home. So I'm in China for three weeks and I get to go home with more money than I made. I would have made in Israel and Spain put together. So that was, like, my introduction. It was like, oh, there's higher power up there and whatever it is it's, it's like I feel it you know what I mean so like that's why I say like that experience overseas like I, it brought like I said it brought me brought me closer to the higher power man. I love that the spiritual journey I feel like people embark on uh because you are you're left there's when you're alone I feel like that's when that's when like you said the God will speak or, you know, you, you start learning about yourself or you start speaking to yourself. It's, it's a really powerful time. And I feel like, uh, you know, a lot of people don't like their life alone. I didn't like it growing up. And then, you know, now that I, I had that experience of being alone, I think it really opened up my journey and helped me kind of figure out who I am. Because when you're alone, you really do figure out a lot. And when you're sitting there praying on it and things like that, it's just, it's, it's impressive. That's like an impressive story. Uh, oh, to man. kind of go through that i have like tons of those stories bro and that's really why i live the way i live like that's why like i said i just came at the page and i've been doing things like that like, and that's just because of those experiences i tap so many and i just know like this is real man. i just know like god's real i just know how i'm real and i live my, i try to live my life as if it's real because like i said i experienced so much like even even me playing basketball man, i have to told so many people the story but i'll say it now because i feel it uh so i was i just remember being in my room and i just remember just not wanting to be here i was nine years old i was in the fourth grade and i just remember just not wanting to be here anymore like 
I wouldn't say suicidal thoughts because I didn't want to die. I just knew I didn't want to be in whatever situation I was in. I didn't want to be in. So I just remember being on my knees and I asked God, send me, just send me somewhere. Please send me somewhere. The next day I walked into my classroom and my best friend, he's literally still one of my best friends to this day. He walks up to me and he goes, hey, you're tall. You want to play basketball? And I was like, yep. His dad comes, picks us up after the school, takes uh, me back to my mom's crib, uh, signed the papers to play AAU. And I've literally, since that day, I've been on the team every year, all the way up until, you know, my first injury. So I feel like bas- like God used basketball to bring me closer to him. God used basketball to save my life because he gave me something to love. You know, I had something to love and that what I loved was basketball. And then it literally, like, since, like, because there was a lot of things that I didn't have growing up. But because I had basketball, I didn't even know I didn't have it. You know what I mean? Like, like I didn't, like I said, I didn't have a father. And it never, I never really cared because, you know, I was always, every weekend, I was in Disney playing basketball. I was traveling here playing basketball. And I had so many people showing me so much love because of how good I was at basketball. Like, that's all that I was focused on. Like, that's all that was you know, around me, like, so the things that I didn't have, I didn't even know it, like, sometimes I didn't even, I, like, even now, like, I would hear about, like, you know, people in bad situations, and this and that, and then I was, like, I was in that same situation, like, I didn't even recognize, you know what I mean, and because, like, basketball, I had something to love, it was, like, therapy for me, it just, it, it healed so, so many things for me, if that makes sense. Yeah, it's, this is, this is very inspirational, and it's great for younger players who, you know, might think that they're kind of, locked in a in an area where they don't want to be or a mentality they don't want to be i think that's great and i i have to ask just because of my new zealand we have a big new zealand contingency uh mm-hmm. your time and your you know you play in canterbury i played in wellington take mm-hmm. us through real quick your your experience playing you know in the uh in new zealand which i thought was like super dope <laughs> oh i loved it man it was it was a great experience. I met guys there, like friends there, who I'll be friends with forever. Like I still to this day have a place to go. Like if pay for food, any of that, just because I met some good people out there who I still talk to to this day. And I mean, like I said, I have a lot of those stories. So if I can, I want to tell you the story of how I even went there. So all of that, that was kind of like right after my uh, my first injury, after I tore my ACL. So I was sitting on the balcony with my cousin. And I just remember like thinking like, if I stay in Orlando, I'm not going to be able to focus on uh, recovering. I'm not going to be able to focus on basketball. And most importantly, I'm not going to be able to focus on building my relationship and getting closer with God. So I literally, in the middle of my cousin speaking, I got on my knees and I asked God, send me somewhere please send me somewhere. And I kid you not, bro. The next day, my agent called me and said, do you want to go to New Zealand? I was like, yep, because I know what I just prayed for. You know what I mean? Like, so I get to New Zealand. The coach comes to me and he says, you know, we know you're coming off your injury, this, that. You don't have to practice. All you have to do is play in the games. And that was the most important thing to me because that was like me being able to focus on basketball because I had just played and I was just out of rhythm and this was helping me getting back in rhythm. Then he goes, so instead of practicing, we're going to hook you up with the physio so you'll get rehab on your knee. Then on top of that, when I get over there, I'm living with the Mormon. And every Monday, I would sit down with his family and we would sit down and talk about God and what God has done in our life and what are our plans for the week and and just the way he, he like, I guess, uh, handles, runs his, his household is how I say if I ever get married, is I'll run it the same way. I'll lead my family the same way he does. So literally, I went to New Zealand. I got on my knees and I asked God for these three specific things. I went to New Zealand and I literally got all of them. I was able to focus on basketball because I didn't have to practice, just play, get my rhythm back. I was getting closer to the relationship with God because I was talking to this man every day, we were just, you know, speaking, him and his family, you know, reading the Bible, things like this. And then I was getting rehab, like free physio. Like I was meeting with this lady every day. She was massaging like my legs. She was stretching it, you know, like doing all this stuff. And then on top of that, because God is so good, New Zealand is one of the most beautiful places in the world. I'm into photography. So I'm out there taking pictures. And it's one of the only places where you can get the mountains, the hills, the plains and the oceans all in one pit. So I'm just out there and I'm just experiencing all of this because I know what I got on my knees and I prayed for it. And then I know that.
thing with me, it's not about basketball. Like people think everything is about basketball because we're labeled as basketball players, but it's so much deeper than that. Like I've been doing this since I was nine years old. Like I'm a, this is inside of me. Like whether I'm making money or not, I'm going to be playing basketball. When I walk outside, I'm dribbling a fake basketball and I can't even help it. Like everywhere I go. And then not only that, because I, I, I love this game so much. Everything that I've ever done, every job that I've ever had has been basketball. Like I was working with uh, EA Sports recording the video game. So when you play NBA Live from like in like 2015 to like 2020 something, those are like my movies. So if you play with Kyrie, D Wade, Kobe, like those type of players, those are my movements. You know what I mean? And then like I said, uh, I travel around to these places, going to orphanages, talking to kids. Uh, you know, free basketball clinics for kids. Um, and I'm also starting something right now. Uh, I'm calling the Jermaine Taylor's Caribbean Tour. So well, I'll be uh, going around the Caribbean and I'll be throwing free clinics and uh, I'll be evaluating these kids and I'll be putting them on a, a recruiting program so we can start reaching out to college coaches and try to get these kids recruited. Because I've seen too many kids, like I went to Guyana and I was in Guyana and I, you know, put on a camp and I'm watching these kids. I'm like, oh, this kid's good. Then COVID happened, everything, a couple of years go by. And then I go, I see this kid's Instagram. I look on his Instagram because I remember how good he was. And now he's like working at like Foot Locker or like something like that. Like, and it's because once they're done with like high school or what, there's nothing else for them. You know what I mean? So it's like, man, like I got to, like, I want to help. I want to help in, in some type of way. And especially in Haiti, like I feel like, no, like nobody cares about Haiti. Like that's that's really what it like, man. I'm sorry, bro. Like it's just, it was just so crazy for me to see like they're an hour and twenty minutes away. It's an hour twenty minute flight. They're that close, and they're living the way they're living. Like it was just it was just so sad to see, man. I just didn't understand it, and I just want I just want to help. So I'm sorry. I know we're getting no off the this topic. no this is uh, this is super cool because I think uh, like you said you. You've had conversations. Uh, you've had conversations with God, and now you have this whole entire program where you're help, there to help. And I think that's just so cool and so admirable uh, to do. And I think this has been this has been a, a very fun interview because I do think that there's such a there's so many different sides of like both a mental aspect, but also you know the 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 uh, physical, mental, and also like your actual. Uh, foundation of like your biblical, your religious sense and, and how these all come together to create, you know, your mentality. And I think that's tremendous. And this has been super fun talking to you, Jermaine. Uh, we're going to have oh, to yeah. have you back on to get some more stories because I love these. And uh, this is a really fun time. Oh, yeah, man. Anytime, man. I enjoy doing it. I feel like this is like my purpose, man. I feel like that's why I went through a lot of the things that I went through because there's a lot of kids coming up behind me who they have no idea what they you get they're getting into like this game is definitely worth it you know I tell like the kids that I talk to all the time like you know they they love this ball is life you know talk ball is life and I'm like do you really know what ball is life means <laughs> like what ball is life means is like when you can get a four-year education for free because of basketball you know what I mean you can travel all around the world and experience all these different things because of a basketball you can take care of your family your friend all because of a basketball like that's what it really means the ball is life like you guys just saying that and, and don't really understand it you know what I mean so it's definitely worth it but there's there's things that comes with it that if you're prepared or if you're not prepared you know it can it can make your, your that journey so much so much harder well, this has been super cool. Jermaine, thank you so much. This has been the Overseas Famous Podcast. Lots of inspirational stuff. We'll have Jermaine back on Overseas Famous Podcast. We'll see you guys soon.